So what is the best lens to get for your Blackmagic Pocket 4K cinema camera? And specifically, what is the best affordable option that you can go with to use this little beast of a camera? So in this video, I'm gonna break down for you the lens that I chose to pick, but not only that, my process behind choosing it. And that's a big thing to talk to you how I went about choosing this lens to see if this is the best lens for you or if you should go with another lens. And that's what I really wanted to make this video about. So of course, I'm gonna show you the lens that I chose. I'm not gonna waste your time. I went with the Sigma 17 to 50 f 2.8 and I'll break down for you why I chose it. But that may not be the best lens for you, but if you use this process that I use and how I went about thinking about it, I think that you'll see if this is a lens for you or if you should choose another lens and where you should go from there. Um, but I don't wanna waste any of you guys' time. Let's just get right into this video, talk about why I chose a lens and maybe what lens that you should choose. So whenever I am deciding on what lens to choose, first you gotta think about your camera body. What lenses can go on your camera body? So the Blackmagic Pocket 4K is natively a micro four thirds sensor and you can choose to go the micro four thirds lenses way. Me personally, I came from Canon, so I did not have a lot of experience or knowledge of micro four thirds lenses, so I chose not to go that route. What I did was got a Viltrox EF speed booster for my camera that allowed me to adapt EF class to my pocket 4K. And that was a big thing for me. From coming from Canon, I knew a lot about EF glass, so I just felt a little more comfortable making the decision within that. So first question I had to ask myself after knowing what, knowing what lens I could use was, which I think a lot of people need to think about is, what is your style? What is your style of filmmaking? A lot of times you'll see people saying you should get this lens for your camera or this lens for your camera, but if it doesn't work well with your style of filmmaking, you probably shouldn't choose that lens. What I mean by that, so my style is very reactive. I shoot weddings and documentaries and short films. So when I'm filming those, I film in a way that is very reactive and in the moment. I don't do a lot of posing and I'm trying to capture real and authentic moments. So I need something that's gonna allow me to to be a lot of places at once and get a lot of focal ranges at once. Cause a lot of times I can't move. Let's say if someone's having an emotional moment where they're talking with their mother about something super, super close to their heart, whether that's a wedding or a documentary. If I move and they see me with the camera trying to get closer, it can make them uncomfortable or whatever. So I needed a lens that allowed me to zoom in and zoom out or and everything like that. So I chose to go the zoom lens range. Now you personally may not choose to go that way. Uh, if you shoot a lot of short films and stuff where you have a lot of control of moving around and things like that, you may can go with a really good prime lens and there are benefits to those. Um, but for me personally, I don't have as much control as times as uh, of the set and everything. So I needed something that's like, hey, you can move quick and do a lot at once and it's okay for that. So I chose to go to the zoom lens range. If you were like, hey, zoom lenses are for me, this isn't the lens for you, but I think it's a really good lens and it has some really cool characteristics. So a lot of times people talk about the characteristics and primes and how they look. This lens right here has a really cool way that it handles lens flares and stuff like that. And I like it. So not only is it a zoom lens, which accompanies my style, it's got some cool characteristics. So the next question you wanna ask yourself is your budget. So you know your style, but you need to make sure you stick within your budget. I didn't have a ton of money to spend. So with, when I updated to my pocket 4K, I knew I needed to get a ND filter. I had a matte box I was putting on there and I had some other IR cut filters where I can talk about that as well for your 4K. And I knew I needed some things for it. So I had about five to 600 bucks to spend on my lens and lens accessories. So when you come to EF glass, there's really two good zoom lenses there's actually a lot of good zoom lenses but there's one that people mainly use which is the sigma 18 to 50 f 1.8 great great lens and i had to choose between the sigma 17 ah, yeah the sigma 17 to 50 f 2.8 and the sigma 18 to 35 f 1.8 and what are the main differences before those lens so this is how i chose the sigma 17 to 50 over the sigma 18 to 35 so of course, let's look at it. Let's start with price since we're going with budget. The Sigma 17 to 50 f 2.8, you can find used on eBay from anywhere from 250 bucks and up from there. So I ended up spending around 269 bucks total. And what this allowed me to do was to get my accessories that I needed to accompany my lens and still be within my budget of five to 600 bucks. The Sigma, uh, man, I'm gonna mess up saying that a lot. So the Sigma 18 to 35, you can find it used for anywhere 500 bucks and up. So if I was to choose that lens, I would have to not get accessories that I wanted to get for it and everything to go from there. So we see that. So when it comes to price, the 17 to 50, 
was going to beat the 18 to 35 and helping me what I needed to get. And then I thought, uh, also I was like, man, I like that it has a greater focal range. So I like that I would have the uh, flexibility of 17 to 50 over 18 to 35. Now the aperture of course was a thing. It's about a one stop different. But what's really cool is when you put a Viltrox speed booster on your 4K, it's gonna give you an extra stop of light. So now that Sigma 17 to 50 f 2.8 now becomes a 17 to 50 f 2.0, which is really, really cool. And I probably, since I shoot manual focus, I'm not gonna go below an f2, which is kind of tough. But in low light situations, you could play with that aperture and get some really cool shots. So that's why I chose a 17 to 50. It was better priced, which allowed me to get some accessories had a wider focal range, and because the adapter that I was using gave me enough light to use. So I couldn't rationalize spending more money for something I felt like was actually more limiting for my style. Now, if I would've went with the 18 to 35, it would not have been a bad option. And if you like that lens better, I would say it's a great budget lens. But as far as zooms and my pricing and my budget, I believe from my style of filmmaking, I sounded really country when I said that. I believe that this, the best lens for my style of filmmaking was the Sigma 17 to 50 because of my style and because of my budget and it's been great for me to use. And everything that you're seeing in this video was actually shot on that, the Sigma 17 to 50 f 2.8. So you can see you can get some really cool images in really different settings and everything like that. So if you are looking for a really good zoom lens and a really good uh, price, I would highly recommend this lens. I'm not gonna have a link to it in my description because a lot of those are new lenses. Man, buy this lens used, save yourself some money. I don't buy anything brand new really. I buy used cars, everything, because it's gonna, whatever. Lenses do hold their value, but you can get this lens used for about 200 and something bucks off Amazon. And for what it provides, man, it's really great. Is it perfect? No, of course not but I like it and it's been a great lens for me. So if you're looking for a great zoom lens at a great price, I couldn't recommend the Sigma 17 to 50 f 2.8 anymore. I hope you guys like this little random video. I just wanted to hop on here and believe that this was valuable information to somebody, not only the lens that I chose, but my thought process behind it. I hope you took something away from this that can maybe help you decide if this is the lens for you or if not. But I appreciate you guys watching this far. If you haven't already, subscribe to see more videos and hit that like button. Of course, it helps push it to more people who may have a 4K or who are making a decision on what lens to buy. But I appreciate you guys so much. Much love and have a great day.